Let's take a look at how we can start using Logos to explore a little more some of the words and grammar from the early chapters of Greek. First, to do a Bible word study on a Greek word, go up here to search and do a Bible search, search Bible text in NA27-4, and here type the English word, the equivalent of the Greek word you're looking for. And that will give you all the Greek instances of the word you want. When you click on the verse that contains that instance, you'll see the word you are looking for is now here in an orange highlight. Right click on that, and you get a menu of all sorts of things you can do. One of the best here is Bible Word Study. And here you see all the different options that this gives you. One of the first places to look is this pie chart under translation that gives you a pie chart of the different uses or different translations of this word in the English text. For agape it's not fairly interesting, it's almost all love. Um, note that when you click on that you can focus on just the certain portion or pie piece um, and then it breaks down um, that uh, usage and translation even more. When you keep scrolling through your word study, you get English instances of that word. There's a lot of them for agape. You get some key example uses. Here's the use as a subject. Here's the use as an object. Uh, grammatical relationships, again, subject and object. And finally, its use with prepositions. two results here for that preposition and so forth. For looking at sentence translation, each sentence in the workbook is or approximates a verse from scripture. And the way to find that is when you have your sentence here in the workbook, this one is number seven, click through to the footnotes and you see number seven is Mark one through nine. So now let's fire that up in Logos. And here we go. The color coding will come later. We'll do that either in October or January, but you can still start to break down this sentence in some interesting ways. Of course, you have your commentary, you have your English translation, and you have a lexicon if you want it. Uh, but another thing you can do when you're on a certain passage is to choose the passage guide to delve a little deeper into the commentaries or the exegetical guide, and this is what will get you some syntax analysis options. So take a look at what comes up here. and you can get some more grammatical information, but look at these visualizations. These different sources do it in different ways, but take for example the opentext.org visualization and it breaks down the sentence here so that you can see the different parts and it happened that in those days and so on. Uh, and You can hover over any of these uh, abbreviations to find out what that is and you can see the sentence come together um, via this little tree, the arrows, the sort of flow chart there. You can also get a word-by-word -word breakdown that gives you translation, pronunciation, more information. Anytime you hover over any of these terms, it'll tell you more about that term. Uh, you can play it for the pronunciation and so on. So with the Bible word study and the exegetical guide, you can start to dig a little deeper into the Greek text of Scripture.